United States troops are reviewed in North Africa, a part of the force hurled against the Nazis in Tunisia. From the American Commander-in-Chief Eisenhower, promotion for General Clark, his second in command. General Clark's secret pre-invasion mission to Africa helped smooth the way for the United Nations. General Eisenhower boarding a plane for the front. America's famous General Doolittle, the man who led the raids on Tokyo, is here commanding the Air Force. A battered bastion of the desert is now under American guard. The stars and stripes flying over North Africa. American nurses are here, too. In battle dress, these Sisters of Mercy are serving with American armed forces on all fronts. French colonial legions mobilize. Reinforcements for the United Nations. A typical Senegalese warrior seems only too happy that days of collaboration with the Nazis are over. Dramatic scenes of the renewal of active Franco-American friendship. United States troops form a guard of honor to salute their new brothers in arms. Free men of France, bayonets fixed, again take their rightful place in war upon the Axis. Washington, D.C. airport, a giant transport brings evidence of the new Franco-American understanding. A French military commission, headed by General Emile Batoir, comes to seek supplies for French forces fighting in North Africa. Jacques de Beauville is General Giraud's civilian representative. General Batoir, veteran of two wars, will advise the United States Army on the types of equipment French troops are trained to use. General McNerney, deputy to the United States Chief of Staff, personally escorts the distinguished military party to the capital. A new day dawns for the fighting French and fighting France. Australia gets a cargo of lightning from America. For that's what the Air Force calls these powerful new fighter planes, lightnings. P-38s, reported to be the fastest high-altitude fighters in the world. Towed to hangars for final assembly and a checkup before going into service. Motors are tuned and tested by expert American mechanics trained at the factories. Details of their powerful armament is a military secret. Roaring down metal runways in the jungle country, they're off to battle the Japs over the South Pacific. Lightning to strike the enemy. Battered Benghazi, for the third time in British hands, falls before Montgomery's ever-rolling Eighth Army. The swastika gives way to the Union Jack. War-weary natives welcome signs of allied victory. Axis supply ships, blasted by the RAF, still smoking in the harbor. The port, one of the finest on the North African coast, was abandoned by Rommel without a fight. Now, wrecked ships are all that's left of what once was one of Rommel's biggest bases, the harbor of Benghazi symbol of the fall of the fascist empire in Africa. Somewhere in the South Pacific, a United States battle force steams upon its mission. Destroyers and giant warships forming a protective screen around the aircraft carrier as the squadron makes contact with a Japanese fleet. Aboard the carrier, Pilots and crews assemble on the flight deck. All is in readiness.
There, across the sky, Jap planes come roaring in. ship at top speed, the captain keeps the carrier constantly turning. Spectacular scenes of a United States naval victory at sea. Yankee guns and Yankee pilots are too much for the Japs. 